Now, it's no secret that AAA FPS games haven't been the best for a while, with Modern Warfare's campaign being shorter than the lifespan of a goldfish paired with the insane crunch employees had to do to even get that game to function, I think it's safe to say that people are a little tired of the constant schlock. More and more people have been flocking to indie developers to get the shooter experiences they want. And there's no surprise why, the indie scene has been providing us with innovative and exciting shooters for years now, and what I'm going to be talking about today isn't that, but it's still kind of interesting to me. <laughs> that game is Crimson Metal. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this video even is. It started as a simple analysis of a game nobody's heard of, but it took a turn that I wasn't expecting. You'll see what I mean. But to preface this video, I should say I'm not making this to talk down to any game devs or anything like that. I don't know the people who made this game personally or anything like that. And for as harsh as I most definitely will get in this video, I actually kind of like this game and the dev team. Otherwise, I wouldn't make a video about them that's this fucking long. I should also mention that most of the footage you're going to see is borrowed from other creators because every time I try to record this game, it gave my computer a goddamn aneurysm. So everyone's footage I use will have their channel linked in the description below so you can go check them out. So sit back, relax, and let's talk about Crimson Metal. Crimson Metal is an FPS very similar to that of Doom with a hint of Half-Life thrown in there for good measure. It was made on the FPS Creator Engine, <laughs> I, I know, and it was developed by an indie studio called Madbox Games, who were founded in 2009, and they make games. I wish I could say more, but this company's basically a ghost. <laughs> I found an old YouTube channel that mainly consisted of trailers for Crimson Metal, but also two other games, one of which is called Doomed, and the other is called Dark Places. Doomed is basically just Doom with two more letters, and Dark Places seems to be more of a traditional horror game, but I'll talk more about those later. They have a website, but none of it's in English, but it does sell gaming related products now, I think? They have a Twitter, but it hasn't been updated since fucking 2016. I even searched for this game myself to see if maybe it had a development page. The closest thing I could find was a LinkedIn account on the off chance that one of the devs is watching this video and is interested in like an interview or something. Please. Feel free to comment below because that would be sick as hell. This game has pretty mixed reviews, like almost more negative than good. And does it really deserve all that hate? Yeah, kinda. Don't get me wrong, I think this is a fun enough little game or else I wouldn't be making this fucking video. But this game is no stranger to bugs and weird design choices. Aside from just being blatantly repetitive a lot of the time, it will also randomly crash without any warning or explanation. And when you die, which you will, unless you're a goddamn doom god, you'll hear the most guttural scream of all time come out of your protagonist. Then you'll immediately get booted back to the fucking main menu. There's not even a restart button. So every time you die, you'll have to sit through two long ass loading screens. So I guess that's an incentive not to die. The levels can certainly be repetitive and samey looking. So you'll probably get lost a fair amount of times. It's also really fucking dark sometimes. Like, God damn, I can't see anything. There's literally no settings you can mess with. No way to lower the loud ass music. No way to turn up the brightness because it's so fucking dark. No way to check the controls first, nothing. I understand not having a difficulty setting after all, the game is advertised as challenging. But why the fuck can't I turn this loud ass music down or just off? Instead of fixing any of these mistakes, the devs just added far from perfect to the game's description because, as we all know, acknowledging the criticism automatically makes it invalid. And I know they added this later down the line too because the game never had far from perfect in any of the trailer descriptions. I originally bought Crimson Metal on Steam, it was literally 74 cents, discounted from its usual price of about $5, and for some reason, this game's soundtrack cost a whole extra five dollars than the actual game itself, even on sale. But aside from these problems, how is the game itself? Well, it's pretty fun, I kinda like it. <laughs> when you boot up the game, you're shown a vague message over a red screen. Get ready, they're coming for you. You wake up in a cold metal laboratory. Men in lab coats can be seen watching you on both sides of the room. You stumble down a dark hallway like a drunk after a long night before being transported into your new hell. You walk past corpses and endless carnage as you hear the muffled screams and gunshots. Oh 
that you stumble up to this large door and enter the nightmare officially. Initially, you're given no incentive or objectives of any kind, you're just given a gun. And as players, we know what to do with these. The actual game begins here and the gameplay loop for every level is pretty similar. You're given a few different guns like a pistol, shotgun, assault rifle, and a big ass machine gun. You can dual wheel with all of these, so yes, you can pair a shotgun with your machine gun and it's fucking fun. The gunplay itself is surprisingly satisfying for being made on the FPS creator. They feel smooth as hell to use and pack a decent punch. You aren't just fed ammo in this game like you are in lots of other games either, so you'll actually have to be creative and use your weapons sparingly at points. Because if you run out of ammo, all you can do is smack a motherfucker. It's really slow and weak as shit. So the game puts it best when it says, eh, it's not great, but it's better than nothing. The actual enemies you'll be shooting range anywhere from these no-name grunts to fucking monsters. The grunts have decent enough AI, they know how to hide behind cover, and they do this shit a lot, which is pretty fucking hard to hit as you can imagine. They don't really seek you out either, they wait for you to come to them. So you have to put yourself in many compromising positions to survive. One thing I can definitely give this game props for is that it's actually somewhat challenging at times, as advertised. <laughs> sometimes it's challenging in a fair way, and sometimes it's challenging in a way that makes you want to fucking slam your keyboard into the wall. They drop you into these rooms where you can barely fucking see. You also have things like these which just kind of feel like scrap doom designs, but they're one of the best enemies in the game and actually kind of fun to fight as they'll literally just charge at you. They're pretty fucking strong too, so you gotta be packing a shit ton of heat if there's multiple of them around. You'll be seeing the same hall and opening the same door a lot in this game. It's pretty clear to me that they were trying to mimic the level design of the first couple doom games and also the very basic game design philosophy of that too, of like finding keys and opening doors, because that is 90% of what you're gonna be doing here. So Considering the generic levels and pretty simplistic gameplay, you can rightfully assume that this game gets a little repetitive at times, and it certainly does. Luckily, the game's runtime is relatively short, so you won't be too bored, hopefully. I mean, I don't know you. You aren't able to pick up any of the enemy's weapons for some reason, but don't worry guys, they have an in-game explanation for this. Apparently, your enemies all have their specific ID tied to this card, making it so that they're the only ones who can use the gun, which is a really complicated way of saying it was easier to just have ammo pickups scattered all around the map instead of making it so you could pick up dude's weapons. This this game's story is told entirely through the loading screen, similar to the one I mentioned earlier. This game's plot is extremely vague. According to the game's description, four elite terrorism squads form secret. Four elite terror. Four elite counter terrorism squads secret. Fuck. <laughs> this is a goddamn tongue twister. Four elite counter. <laughs> I can't do it now. Four elite. <laughs> Four elite counter-terrorism squad, storm secret cyborg and biological where fuck warfare. Four elite counter-terrorism squad, storm secret cyborg and biological warfare weapon production facilities, but none of the personnel, chief commander, or the place for cyborg productions are identified. All four squads find themselves in a death trap without any chance of getting out or contacting the outside world. I almost fucked it up at the end there. It's a simple ass story, but I don't know, it's still kind of intriguing, I guess. It's better than nothing. <laughs> what should have been the tagline for this game? We don't see our character at any point in the game, but he is slapped right onto the poster. I mean, I assume this is him anyway. <laughs> As you can see, he's rough and tough and easily the coolest guy to ever have this haircut. Hello? He doesn't really have any personality or motivation besides, I gotta get the fuck out of here, man. He also doesn't speak a single fucking time, which isn't surprising. I don't really know what he'd say besides. I've got a peer-reviewed study right here that says... Mm. Says you're a pussy. But right away, you feel like this dude's more important than the game's letting on. I mean, why the hell are these scientists watching me? The next card gives us a bit more info. God, it's so hard to fucking read. You wake up with a gun in your hands. You barely get on your feet. Your eyes hardly adapt to the light. The last thing you remember is the defeat of your squad and the enemy territory. You miraculously survived and there is no way back. Retribution is the only way. Even though this is also extremely vague, I kind of like it. It gives us enough information to work with. There's people here who are mad as fuck at you and you gotta get around them. As we continue to play, we learn about something called the Genesis Project, which is also fucking explained in loading screen. We now know the facility we're in specializes in biotechnology and seems to be combining humans with robotic elements, essentially making them cyborg super soldiers. They don't really have any thought process besides doing their job. They're basically just the combine soldiers from Half-Life, but more metal man. 
and it also kind of explains why they're not that smart but yet extremely resilient. Some of these motherfuckers are complete bullet sponges, let me tell ya. But you won't always learn the lore from these things. Sometimes it just explains things like how to dual wield a weapon, even though you're already 40 minutes into the game at this point and have probably figured it out yourself. But after fighting through another level and doing the cool water maze I mentioned earlier, you get another message, this time in front of a red background again. It seems that the messages with a red background directly correlate to the protagonist and his thoughts. He's reasonably questioning why exactly he was left alive while his teammates seem to be you know. I don't feel so good. The next mission is interesting because all of your weapons are stripped away, but don't worry, so are the enemies. You instead slowly stalk through this much more detailed level that is way more filled than anything we've seen before. In this level, you also find multiple testing chambers that are holding some strange looking beasts. This level also feels like it's constantly building to something and that tension doesn't fade away for the whole entire experience. Nothing of no actually ends up happening, but it's the thought that something might that really makes it work. Once you finish the level, you get an extremely long info dump on these crazy monsters you've been occasionally encountering. And this isn't even all the info apparently, god damn. These are some of the corporation's earliest work. It's meant to strike fear in the hearts of its enemies with its terrifying look, quick movement, and unrelenting urge to kill. So much so that the corporation has to remotely control them to ensure that they don't go rogue. I think this is a great concept for a monster and it really adds a lot to this pretty simplistic design. It's probably just an SCP that I haven't heard about before that they're ripping this shit from, but if not, it's kind of neat. You once again walk for a really long time before they finally give you a gun again. As you might expect though, a pistol isn't much of a defense against these things. This level is really well designed. The enemies are hidden well in the environment so they can easily be missed sometimes. There's these cubicles containing dead bodies for some reason. But once you successfully navigate the level, you'll find an open air vent in which you can exit. Here we get the second piece of information about the Reapers. It's kind of crazy to think that even though this is the corporation's first ever experiment, it's still an insanely powerful killing machine. It also sounds like they're current formula for making things isn't much different from when they made this, so the dudes definitely had their shit figured out going in. This level is kind of similar to the last one except with water, which of course the reapers can fucking hide in so they can ambush you. As you walk through this creepy ass environment, you'll find countless different unfinished experiments. It even looks like they're growing human matter from fucking scratch. Eventually you'll get your hands on the assault rifle, which definitely makes things easier, but the odds are still quite stacked against you. A lot of the areas here feel almost maze-like, which can definitely disorientate you. And trust me, you don't want to get confused when being chased by this fucking shit. Eventually we do another maze before finding a shit ton of weapons again. I really like this design choice. Stripping away all my weapons will be to return to me gradually. Really helped me realize how much I took this shit for granted in the beginning. I missed my shotgun slash rifle duel. From here you'll soon be able to escape. The message here being the most simple one yet. Let's rock. The protagonist just went through hell for the last hour, saw ungodly shit that no one should ever see. I imagine he's pissed. The next level is exactly what you'd expect. You just walk through these red ass hallways, shooting enemies in the face, everything's going smoothly until... This is your newest enemy. As you finish the level, we'll get a view of what it actually is. <laughs> this is basically what the corporation set out to create to begin with. A super soldier who can complete damn near any task with minimal effort. These things are OP. They're by far the most challenging enemy we've encountered up to this point. That guttural ass scream immediately lets the player know they're in for a bad fucking time. But going even deeper into the facility and killing hundreds of hundreds of goons, you'll start to notice a spike of insanity in the music. This is a good enough time to talk about the game's soundtrack. It's nothing crazy, but I personally enjoy it. The slower, more suspenseful levels have this appropriately eerie music, but levels like this where it's nothing but run and gunning are accompanied by high intensity music like this. The soundtrack was apparently co-produced by two people. There's this name that I can't read, and then somebody named Vlad Venom, which has to be the coolest fucking name ever. I found a music producer named Vlad Venom on Facebook, but once again, I'm not sure if this is them. It also looks like they haven't been active for quite a while, and despite my searching, I found absolutely nothing on the other person, so that might be a lost cause. Will this mystery ever be solved, goddammit? Probably not. <laughs> After plenty of shooting and reloading later, you'll finally get information about those zombie things we've been fighting. They're called unsuccessful clones, and they're basically a glorified zombie. These things are failed attempts that the corporation has created over the years, and there's many of them. They definitely weren't any good for proper combat, but the corporation decided to turn a negative into a positive, and basically just use these things for any wacky-ass experiment they could think of. Not only did they create the perfect super soldier, they also created the perfect lab guinea pig. Finishing this level, we get another glimpse into the mind of our protagonist. After all he's been through, I'd imagine he has a lot on his mind. He's probably even more pissed than last time. 
Ah, uh, oh, okay, hold, hold on a second, guys. I'm sure his thoughts will be downloading in a second. <laughs> this leaves us with very mixed feelings on one hand. We know we're about halfway through this nightmare now, but on the other, it seems like the protagonist is completely losing sight of why he's even here or what he's trying to escape from to begin with. He's starting to lose track of who he is. All he can remember is the endless metal hallways of the facility. The next few levels play out relatively the same, killing goons in different labs and shit until you encounter this fucking thing. I shit my pants the first time this happened, and he's no bitch either, he takes a lot to put down. You can find a grenade launcher attachment for your gun, and this is kinda crucial to fucking killing this thing. It can take a while, but when you finally put him down, it feels so fucking good. Going forward, the game starts to get interesting and starts to break away from the generic Doom-like shooter it's been up till this point. There's more puzzles and platforming, the environments start to vary more, it's great. But once you've made it through, you'll take this long ass elevator ride before getting one last message from the game. You know what to do. It's clear at this point that the protagonist his mind is completely gone. All he can think of is killing. It kind of begs the question of if he was ever real to begin with. Why were these scientists watching us the whole time? Are we the newest version of their super soldier formula? Was this all a test to see if we have what it takes to handle ourselves? Similar to the test we were told about before? I have a feeling that our questions will be answered soon or not. You enter this futuristic half-life looking area. It really nails a tone of finality here. You're immediately greeted with another water segment and it's the largest one yet. But upon completing this level, well, I don't fucking know. Apparently the version of the game I had was just episode 1. I desperately searched for the second episode but I couldn't find anything. So all I have are out of context moments I can find in other people's videos. Am I annoyed by this? Fuck yeah. But then again, did I only pay 74 cents for this game? Yeah, so I guess I got my money's worth anyway. If I really had to guess though, I'd say my theories are probably not far from the truth. I mean, look at this guy, he's definitely a super soldier. So I guess I'm just gonna go with my headcanon here of this whole time you were an experiment, and that's why the game is so goddamn vague. <laughs> oh, what's that? I'm done talking about the game, but the video's not over? Oh. Yeah, that's right, motherfuckers, you've been tricked. You are now trapped in a full analysis of a dead indie developer, and there's no escape. Just kidding, please don't leave. <laughs> After Crimson Metal, it seems the devs wanted to take a more standard approach to horror and create a game called Dark Places. And yes, it's still fucking made on FES Creator. Right away, you'll notice this game is not pretty. It actually kind of looks like shit. It has a cheap horror game look that you've probably seen in a million other free games on Steam. It's also very heavily inspired by Doom once again, but I think I kind of prefer this one, I can't lie. This game was developed by someone called Bloody Pixels, who I once again could find literally nothing about. Dark Places is extremely vague in its lore. The description says it's a psychological horror single player game, set in a surreal world filled with horrific creatures and nightmarish delusions. He plays a daemon hunter, <laughs> desperately searching for answers only to descend into madness. Again, super vague. Almost at a point of annoyance, but hopefully we'll actually get some kind of story this time, unlike, you know, the last time. Starting a game, it opens up a log from November 26, 1996 that reads, So strange dreams have been haunting me for several weeks. Sometimes I feel like their shadows seem to come in touch with my soul. This feeling is impossible to describe. I don't know how long I can live like this. The actual game opens in a dark and blurry room as a boy calls out for his father. Dad! Okay. You walk into a dark red hallway that seems to stretch on for eternity. Bodies and other horrors line the roof in an unnatural way. You find a note that simply reads, they all deserve it. You walk out of the room and find yourself in a pitch black void only filled with some small cobblestone paths that you can follow. You find a room with several different clocks in it that all read different times. Letting us know we're in some kind of dimension where time is irrelevant and all over the place. You find yet another note that reads, I know why monsters are so desperately breaking into our world. They have a sense of impotency here. Good people die because they possess two lofty ideals. Their naivety making them an easy prey. If anyone hits you, don't allow it. Break his arm in a way so he could never hit anyone again. Exploring a bit more, you'll find many grisly and unfamiliar looking creatures, or something just kind of vibing in this dark and void. You also find another note that says, This game is an early action access and made by one man on a fuck ass engine. Please save your progress in different slots. While being hilarious and completely immersion shattering, this also gives me more answers than I had before. This game was apparently made by one guy and not a couple people like I assumed because all the different names I found attached previously. Could all three of these games just be made by one guy? Is the entire studio just one guy? Probably. 
That would make a lot of sense, actually. If you leave the void and find yourself in the middle of some kind of cemetery that has a massive bottomless pit at the end of it, you decide to jump in having no other choice presented to you and see this. My strength is leaving me. I have to remember. I have to gain control. You spawn in a large room that is mostly hidden in darkness. As you travel through, you'll eventually find a mysterious man hunched over. Once you approach him, this shit happens. This actually kind of spooked me a little, I can't lie. Sure, he's just some kind of zombie or whatever, but the way he kept relentlessly chasing me from a few feet behind kind of put me on edge. At the end of the room, you'll find a series of doors. Opening the wrong one will end up leading to nothing, which will probably result in you dying. But once you eventually find the right one, you'll be set free into another hallway. Here is where the main gameplay loop you'll be doing begins. It has very similar gameplay to that of Crimson Metal. Walk down repetitive hallways and shoot monsters. You occasionally have to press a button, find a key, or sometimes see some vague shit like this. You get a few different guns that feel okay to use. And before I forget, one of this game's main selling points in the description is the fact that it has over an hour of original music to accompany it. This is what that hour of original music sounds like. Look, I get this was made by one dude, but like, come on. I'm not trying to be a hater, I promise. Where this game really shines is when it tries to break away from its repetitive cycle and do something new. One thing I do already like more about this game, though, is that it's clearly trying to tell some kind of story other than just give us vague lore on everything happening. You actually have to look for the lore in-game this time instead of seeing it in a loading screen, which is pretty neat. And you also get to watch the protagonist descent into madness. You finally get past that damn hallway and find yourself in some kind of mortician with a note that reads, this place is trying to confuse you. It's alive. Before any big brain users comment it, I'll just go ahead and confirm all y'all's suspicions. Yes, this game is on in the head. So yeah, as cool as the setup might be, it's also undermined a little bit by the fact that it's just another horror game about something happening in some dude's head. Don't get me wrong, I still like that this game has a plot at all. It's just like, uh, I feel like it's seen it a million times. It's just a little annoying to play through a three hour game and get told by the end, yeah, your guy just has really good imagination, what else can I say? I would have much preferred if this game's fluff was cut out completely, instead of making it a four hour long affair about shooting enemies and opening doors. Maybe remove a lot of that and focus on smaller, scarier set pieces, like there's a few of them that are pretty decent, and I don't know, maybe do something a little fucking unique with the story. <laughs> It's nice that this game has the story at all, like I said, the other one basically doesn't, but like, Jesus man, it feels like something I would've came up with in middle school. Like hell, this game was only worth 74 cents and I'd say that's definitely enough for like a 2 hour game or whatever. But now I'm kinda split 50-50 on both of these games, cause while I like the gameplay and weapon variety of Crimson Metal a little more, I definitely prefer the narrative Dark Places has over this shit. <laughs> in my opinion, if they just combine these two ideas into one and cut out a bunch of that fat that dragged them down so much, then you would actually have a pretty solid Doom clone. Wait a minute. Doomed is by no means a great game, but it's by far the best in this odd little trilogy. And for what it's worth, it seems that the creators, or creator I guess, took a little bit of the criticism about their last two games to heart, and actually tried to make something pretty unique and exciting this time. It's still a janky mess with an extremely vague story, but if you're gonna play anything in this video, I'd say just play this one and keep it at that. Doomed begins with the exact same title screen as Crimson Metal and immediately throws you into a dark, empty, mil militaristic facility filled with monsters and demons alike. You're given a fire axe in very vague directions, similar to the other two games. Much like Dark Places, Doom takes its time with the opening, allowing you to slowly explore the halls at your own pace, and slowly building tension in the process. Since the map is very repetitive once again, you'll probably get lost and confused a few times throughout. It also doesn't take a long time to realize that they're pulling the exact same gaming mechanics from before, find a key, open the door, it's kind of ridiculous at this rate, I must have done this like a million fucking times. Your first enemy encounter doesn't even happen until like 15 minutes in, and when it does... Yeah, the melee weapons are kind of shit. This is definitely disappointing to learn, but not surprising at all considering this game was once again, made in the FPS engine. Eventually you will get a gun and it feels about the same as the other game. Simple and kind of boring at times, but definitely satisfying in a weirdly nostalgic way. You continue on doing the same task over and over thinking you've seen it all until... 
This was actually really great and one of the first times I felt genuine tension during these games. Cause not only was I worried about dying and starting over from my save, but also because I was just kind of creeped out by this motherfucker. I mean, look at him. But despite his lumbering presence, he goes down pretty easily. This is a very simple encounter, but if these games had more shit like this, then I wouldn't be nearly as harsh about the repetition in them. The best part about this though is that you get to keep his chainsaw for yourself for like two seconds. <laughs> you do this neat little kill animation and that's about it, but it's still fun though. Finally getting your first piece of story in a fucking loading screen. Really? We're back to this shit again? My favorite thing about the last game was that its story, while simple, was very fun and easy to get into. It was basically shoving that shit down your throat from the first few seconds. That was a, that was a sentence, huh? <laughs> But now we're back to reading vague loading screens in order to get any lore out of this game whatsoever. But whatever, let's just see what it says. God, why is this so fucking hard to read? <laughs> Since you've taken up arms, your memory gradually returns to you. Your team's cryogenic chambers were abducted by alien smugglers. There is still hope in your heart that you will find your comrades alive and unharmed. These creatures are extremely cruel. You won't reach an agreement. So you have to communicate with them in their own language. The language of pain. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually kind of neat, I guess. I really like how it lays everything out on the table, unlike Crimson Metal. And that's a pretty unique premise, too. Demonic aliens. Fuck it, it's time to kill them. But at the same time, that's all it really gives us for a while. You gotta run around and just blindly shoot, waiting for the lore to be drip-fed to you, but like Crimson Metal, it basically just doesn't happen. Most of the loading screens are dedicated to giving tips, they even run out of those pretty early on. Again, this is pretty disappointing considering I was hoping this game would basically be a mix of the decently fun gameplay of Crimson Metal and the decently fun storytelling of Dark Places, but that doesn't seem to be the case. But alas, after a few hours of shooting, you'll reach the final mission, which is basically just a quick run and gun. And then you'll reach this tiny little bright ass room with three soldiers who don't attack you this time. They just kind of stare. You approach the trio only to fade into the final wall of text. Your strength, persistency, hunger for justice, and desire to find your team doomed all of our enemies to painful death. <laughs> they had been doomed from the moment your cryo tube was stolen. The base of unknown organization <laughs> what, has been destroyed. Secret encoded data was withdrawn and the imprisoned were rescued. Now the way leads home. What? What the fuck was that? Was the ending of this game really just, yay, you found your teammates, let's get the fuck out of here. It's still a lot more of a plot than Crimson Metal had, but it's still not much. So I guess what I'm saying is this game is just fine. And it's also kind of just bad on occasion. But it's probably the best of the trilogy in my opinion. It isn't too bad for 74 cents. But I guess this wasn't the perfect merger I was hoping it would be. In fact, I kind of think all three of these ideas together would make for a pretty decent little game. Give me that gunplay and that enemy lore of Crimson Metal. Give me the horror and story of Dark Places. Give me the simplicity and smoothness of Doomed. And you got yourself a solid 6 out of 10 right there, baby. What have we learned here today, guys? Well, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> like I said at the very beginning of this video, I'm not sure what this video even is at this point. I guess it was just fun to spend so much time on a pretty niche topic that probably not that many people care about. So it's satisfying on a personal level, but it was also just fun in general trying to piece this shit together and figure out this weird little mystery of who the fuck made these games. And even though we didn't really gain the answers, I hope maybe making this video will help us get some. Like I said, maybe I could do an interview with the person who made this. And like I said all the way in the beginning, I'm not trying to shit on some random indie dev. But I just rather wanted to share something that I find neat and wanted to think about what could have been. Because I think these games actually had a bit of potential, hence why I bought them to begin with. I think the Doom and Half-Life era of first person shooters is one of my personal favorites and that's why I'm always looking for games that can replicate that feeling. Some do it in spades and others are doomed.
But then again, not every Doom clone needs to be a masterpiece, you know? All I really need at the end of the day is the ability to shoot demons in the fucking face, and these games definitely provide that shit in bulk. I also respect the fact that these games were all potentially made by one guy. For a one man team, these are surprisingly solid. He also made three more games than I ever will, so I'm obviously not trying to take that away from them. I guess I'm just a fan. A very confused and whiny fan, but a fan nonetheless. And as a fan, I think it's time for y'all's return, I'm serious. It's been years, man. You're so close to cracking the fucking code here. If it takes a whole other trilogy, I'll play those as well. And I'll talk about them too, I don't even care. Look at the runtime, do you think I'm sane? Do you?